Welcome into the Psych with Mike library. This is another Psych with Mike. I am here with my co-host, Mr. Brett Newcomb. Hello, everybody. How have you been? I've been great. So we've been on this series about the holidays, and we're going to continue that today. So how have you been dealing with the holidays? Have you been well? Have things been going well for you? Is there anything that's happened that you've had to deal with that you uh, would like to share? No. Okay. <laughs> no, you know, I, it, that's an interesting question that you asked. That we're coming into the holiday season. Thanksgiving has just happened and Christmas is on the horizon. And I know that culturally I'm supposed to get into a sort of suffusion of warmth and family and idyllic expectations, but I don't. Uh we had Thanksgiving dinner with a group, family and friends, a large group. It was very nice. It was a good get together, but we do that pretty regularly, and we do that throughout the year. And the arbitrary get together with, with other people that you yeah, care about. Yeah, absolutely. And so to arbitrarily set a date and say this is the date on which one experiences friendship and love makes no sense to me. I live my life trying to do those things pretty regularly. Uh, and, and I feel the same way about Christmas. We give gifts all year long. We have, we don't have Christmas in July because that's a, an economic marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. But to me, all of that it sort of comes out of a cultural fantasy that I label and, and lump together as a Norman Rockwell vision of America mm -hmm. and a Hallmark Cards vision of America. And we are taught to expect some beautiful suffusion of goodwill to men uh, and cheer and sharing and caring and loving that most days of the year we say to hell with, I'm busy earning a living or dominating the herd or whatever it is that I try to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm supposed to stop then at a certain time and say, now I need to be calm and open and giving and sharing and caring about others. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a marketing scam. Uh, that has value in it because I think the concept has value. Right. But I think if you live your life that way, then then what's the difference? But there are so many examples in our society of things that if you live your life that way, then your life would be better. Whether or not you go to a 12-step program uh, as a recovering person or even not as a recovering person, if you just applied the precepts of the 12 steps to anybody's life, their life would be better. It would be impossible for your life to be worse. If you applied the Christian value system to a life, whether you believed in God or not, your life would be better. So I think that, that there are lots of examples that we have where if you apply these things to your life, your life would be better. What I wonder is, you know, if we didn't have this day, if we didn't have this season, if we didn't have this message, okay, now pay attention to things that are good and, and being connected and being happy, being gracious and, and thankful, then would we stop thinking about it? Well, I think there's a difference between being thankful I, mean, I think that has its own intrinsic value. To stop periodically, be cognitively and consciously aware of the blessings and the people in your life that matter to you, and communicating to them, you know, I love you. You are important to me. You have value in my life. I think that really is an important thing. I, I would like to make the distinction between a reminder, a calendar reminder to say, this is a time to say to somebody, I care about you, and the what I call fantasy imagery of, uh, or the cultural messaging of the good time feelings of the holidays. Uh, that to me is an artificial construct. But the real thing is, is a reminder that I think it has value of being able to reach out to somebody and contact them and say, I appreciate that you're in my life. I, I got several, we just had Thanksgiving, I got several contacts from people that I know, a multiple number that said plainly and simply, you are of value in my life, and I want to let you know it. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, that touches me. That 
validates me and it makes me feel good. And then because I had gotten those, <laughs> then it reminded me to reach out to some people and say similar things. But that's my, I think my point is yeah. that if we didn't have, because I agree with you a hundred percent that I would like for all of us to, uh, engage in our, or engage our lives as if it were Christmas every day. I yeah. think that that would be fantastic, but I don't think that it's realistic. I don't think that most people do. And so if we didn't have an event, a, you know, festival, a season where that was the expectation. And, and I agree a hundred percent that it's just way, 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 way over marketed and right. over commercialized. retail right. commercialized. But I think that comes along with the territory. I think that is a consequence of the, the, the process, right? of having it be society wide but if we didn't have it if it were absent if we took the christmas season out of the cultural awareness would we stop thinking that way altogether i don't know you know you spend most of your life doing therapy you sit in a room with people that are out of balance and in pain and in distress about their life i spent most of my working life doing that and you know we were talking a few weeks back about what are your underlying understandings and philosophical approach to doing it. And I think a lot of therapy involves doing reality testing. Mm -hmm. Let's test what your assumptive script is that someone wrote for you and handed to you. You know, you're my son, you have to grow up and be a doctor. You have to be a good person and this is the way that I define good person. Uh, and what is the real script of your life? Because I think people struggle with a mismatch how I feel about myself and how I live my life and make my choices is framed for me by a message from my society and my parents that this is what it takes to be successful. This is what it takes to be good. This is what it takes to have value, these conditions. And in therapy, I think you ask people to look at the way you actually live. Look at what you feel. Is that a realistic interpretation of how you know yourself to be? What are the patterns in your life that caused the ebb and flow of distress. And so you, you check it out. So I think, continuing this line of, of thinking, there is value in these messaging concepts like the holiday seasons. But I think it's a restrictive value, a limited value. I don't think it's a global or encompassing value. I don't think most men of good cheer are suffused with a glow of brotherly love just because it's the holidays. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think they, they are suffused by that at all. Although they may say those words, mm -hmm. you know, deck the halls. Uh, I think most of us are more myopic in our vision of where we stand in our lives and that we need to come up for air once in a while and say, I am incredibly grateful for the things and people in my life. What, whatever that is for wherever you are. So I'm, we don't we don't rehearse these obviously before we we start recording <laughs> we, them and, we make and, it up as we go along right yeah. but you know as we're having this conversation i find that i'm I, I i'm conflicted because on the one hand i'm a big believer in the idea of mirroring and the presentation of an idealized example and so on the one hand the Norman Rockwell painting right. is that idealized example which I think can have value on the other hand I'm also aware that if that presentation or that 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 example is unrealistic for the individual then it sets a an expectation of failure I cannot achieve that and therefore there must be something inherently wrong with me even though it may not be your fault that you cannot achieve that and so I wonder where that balance is because I think we're both agreed that what we would like would be for people to have this awareness in their lives every day rather than during the holiday season how do i think it would make the quality of your life richer mm -hmm. every single day but you know thinking about it and we've each shared in this venue and others uh, the difference in our lives as we are living them today and our childhoods and our family of origin and i know personally i really struggled to 
step off the train that I was born on, mm-hmm. the, the path that my family of origin, the script they wrote for me and the life they lived and told me that I was going to live. I wanted a different thing for me in my life. And I wonder how many people struggle with that. I think that's a lot of what happens in therapy is you get people that are in pain because they're either not living on the train they were born on or they feel that they should be doing better the things they were taught they were supposed to. And so, so it creates pain and emotional imbalance. Mm-hmm. And, and so you are all about emotional balance mm-hmm. and emotional regulation when you do therapy. Well, where's the dysregulation coming from? Mm-hmm. And, and I think much of it, uh, some of it, I don't know how much, comes from these packaged concepts that we swallow whole. I think that's absolutely true. And, you know, in my family of origin, the training was that I was not capable or, or that I didn't have the right to be able to believe what I thought was my reality, my truth. And it wasn't until I became an adolescent that I started to look at the world and say, wait a minute, the way that I see things seems to make more sense than the way that people are telling me that they are. And yet I still was insecure in being able to accept that because I had had all of this training that that wasn't something that I was rightfully able to do. And that's, you know, so for me, I, I really... Yeah, your, your father never told you in childhood, son, you're going to grow up and get a PhD. No, as a matter of fact, they all told me that I would never amount to anything, exactly. that I would never probably you work. You get a laboring and, job. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. My, mine too. Mine told me I wasn't smart enough to go to college. Right. And, and I mean, I, that's what my, my principal in high school told me as he was expelling me in my, during my senior year yeah. was that I would never have a job. I would never go to college. I would never be anything. And so those were the messages that I heard when I, when I ended up having things happen to me that, that challenged that. I was still insecure with believing that my perception was accurate because of that messaging. And so I want people to be able to create their own perception, their own script. But how do you do that if you don't have the example? I mean, and so I, I still, I struggle with that idea. Now, ideally, you know, you would go to therapy and you would get that example from a qualified professional who would be able to help you wade through it. Right. And that would be ideal. That isn't something that everybody's going to do. That isn't realistic any, no. even of, in, in itself. Right. So then where else do we get those those examples? Well, are there heroes anymore? Right. You know, and, and the marketing messaging of packaged holidays has value. I think we both agree. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure that, that well, I don't know what, what your feeling is. I, I don't think it has the pervasiveness of the way that it's marketed. I, I don't think the reality matches that. I mean, you, you, we watch movies during the holiday season, you know, Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, and most of them are about you know children who are living hard lives and then miracles happen and wonderful things happen and their mother's cured of cancer and they get to stay in their house and they're not repossessed by the mean old banker down the street you know the the wonderful life story uh george bailey those are awesome stories and they're moving and powerful and they make us feel good but I don't know that we internalize that and live our lives differently because of it. And it goes back to, and I say this and then you make fun of me, but the difference between catharsis and cathexis. It's a really powerful... I, I do make fun of you when you say that. Yeah. It's a really powerful emotional experience. It's very cathartic, but yeah. it doesn't lead to any real understanding. It's not cathexic. And that, I think, that I, I think that we are agreeing is is the nut is yeah. that we have to not only have the emotional catharsis we have to come to a deeper understanding about our own personhood and take take responsibility for our own script so in effect we're saying the same thing live your life daily by the values that bring strength sustenance solidity connection to you recognize them formally on occasion because that has its own value too but day in and day out walk that walk and think about for yourself from your own perspective your own 
genuine, sincere personhood, what is the script that would be most valuable for you as a person for, you know, this idea of, of going to Thanksgiving dinner and sitting around a table with a bunch of people eating Turkey is not the most valuable script for everyone. Right. And we have to give ourselves permission to be able to engage in the script that matters and is powerful for us. And during Christmas, the script that is valuable and powerful for every individual is going to be different. And that's where, so I like the sum of the prepackaged example. I don't like the commercialism of right. it. But what I don't like about it is that it tends to follow a singular line. And that isn't always the line that's best for the person. Well, and as a lead into a subsequent discussion, um, uh Sometimes these things are so commercialized as a concept that we lose track of an underlying issue, and that is the degree of social isolation. Mm -hmm. And if you come up for air once a year and look around and say, I need to contact with my fellow man and have a Thanksgiving dinner with all my friends, uh, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And one of the negative contributors is the social isolation that we suffer from in this country. And there are a lot of reasons for that. And we'll talk about that next time. And that actually, yes, perfect segue, because I think that I agree 100% with that idea that if we come up for air once, you know, because I started off talking about, well, what happens if we remove this from the social consciousness? But I agree, if you only come up for air one time a year, that just isn't enough to right. do it. And that is a whole nother show topic. So... Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Psych with Mike. As always, the music that appears in Psych with Mike is written and arranged, performed by Mr. Benjamin DeClue. So we thank him for that. Join us next week. We will talk about uh, this idea of loneliness associated with the holiday season. We will see you then at another Psych with Mike. And certainly we want to say to you before we go, happy holidays. Absolutely. <laughs>